Um, again, I mean, let's wait a little bit more. You can see that I'm uh, gonna go uh, quite slowly, but fundamentally here because uh, we have time, you know. Uh, so I'm gonna prove also the characterization term, which is about compactness of uh, uh, in 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 the in the set of absolutely continuous curves. You know, how do we have how do we have uh, compactness, and then. You know, from there, I'll explain to you the general strategy for existence of minimizers. Um, then we're going to prove really existence of minimizers. Afterwards, we're going to study regularity of minimizers. And it turns out that we can prove still that uh, any minimizer is going to be in CK. So everything is going to be quite consistent. That's going to take us quite a few lectures. But I mean, the overall picture is quite interesting because we can go really from the beginning to, to the optimal regularity of the minimizers, okay? So that's the goal. We're gonna do first the compactness in, in, in this, this set of absolutely continuous curves and then I'll describe the strategy for us to go. Before that, let me remind you, like, why do we need, uh, I mean, why, why are we in, in, in absolutely continuous curves very quickly? So again, our problem is minimizing uh, certain action functional, I of eta, which is minimizing the curves uh, over the actions of the curve eta, so L of eta, eta dot ds. Um, L is, convex and, and so on and so forth. Okay, maybe let me write down uh, that L is in CK, D square in the V variable of L X V is always positive. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but uh, the, one of the key assumption we put is that limit as V goes to infinity of L X V, uh, no, infimum of infimum over all x of L x v over v is going to be plus infinity. So this is super linearity. Uh, it doesn't give any explicit growth rate. However, it only gives us that, you know, it grows faster than linear, but it can grow, you know, like v log v or something like that. So just a little bit faster than linear, but not like, uh, not like v to any power p greater than one. Okay. So so, I mean, like, you, you know, so doesn't, doesn't grow as fast as V to the power P with P bigger than one in general. Okay, so that, that's, that's the weakness of that. I mean, we don't have a quantified rate of, of grow. Um, so what we only have is that, so we only have have that for any, pardon my writing, for any, let's say, constant, um, uh, um, I'm running out of constant. So for any constant, let's say, uh, theta greater than zero, there exists C theta greater than zero so that, you know, we can quantify that LXV is gonna be greater than theta times V minus C theta, uh, you know, so any theta you chose, uh, it's gonna grow faster than theta times V. That, that's all what we can say. So naturally you can see that from here, naturally what we have is that integral from A to B L gamma gamma dot DS is gonna be greater than equals to theta integral from A to B gamma dot ds minus C theta times B uh, minus A, okay? So that's the, that's a natural thing that we have. Um, so clearly what is, what is important is here. What is important is, you know, a constant is a constant, but it helps us to impose the conditions that maybe a natural condition would be that uh, gamma dot should be in L1, right? So, I mean, uh, here, what it suggests is that we should impose that gamma dot is in L1 of AB. And that's exactly, that's exactly why, uh, why we consider 
the the space of function uh, you know like eta is always in absolutely continuous uh, curves from ab to rl right okay so so you know again i recall here the definition and i recall here the characterization theorem um, that if gamma is absolutely continuous then you know it satisfies the three conditions gamma dot exists almost everywhere gamma dot is Lebesgue integrable on ab it's it's in l1 maybe basically and and gamma remember when we define Lebesgue integrable that means that the 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 the, the mod of gamma is integrable right it's, it's not just you know just the itself but the whole um uh, absolute value for in r or, 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 or the length in 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 rn and then we have the the fact that gamma t minus gamma equals to integral from i to t gamma dot sds but i mean the, i just explained to you uh, the 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 reason why i mean this is why we consider uh the the set of absolutely continuous curves okay and then uh we already talked about um about that, you know, to consider absolutely continuous curve, uh, maybe let me just quickly record here that we're gonna show that there exists a sequence gamma k in absolutely continuous curve from AB to RN so that we have say I of gamma k, which is the action on the curve gamma k, which gonna converge to the infimum value of I of eta eta in this admissible set whatever that is um i mean it's absolutely continuous maybe let me even record a is all curve that is absolutely continuous from ib to rn with two fixed endpoint at the i equals to y at the b equals to z those are fixed endpoints right so i mean it's a direct uh, direct method in calculus of variation and from here I mean, when you extract a sequence that, you know, it's, it's action converging to the mean value, infimum value, you here would like to have a, you know, some sort of a compactness result. Result for gamma k. So that, that's, exactly, that's exactly our goal here to, to obtain a compactness result. Um, you know, this is a very traditional but effective way in analysis, right? You know, um, and uh, again, some of you might be quite familiar with this uh, this theorem already. As I said, I'm uh, doing it uh, slowly from the beginning, but really fundamentally, this compactness result. Sometimes people call this one a tight tightness, uh, tightness, uh, or tightness condition implies compactness. So. in the literature okay uh, so let let me just say it out loud and then we're gonna discuss its proofs and also uh the the condition we put the tightness condition is optimal in the in the sense that if it doesn't hold then we can we can easily point out a count example we actually did already last time but i'll, I'll recall it okay um, so what, what, you know, again, we have a sequence that is absolutely continuous uh, from AB to RN. We need to put a, uh, an assumption that um, the key assumption is that gamma dot K is uniformly integrable on the interval AB. Uh, and again, this is epsilon delta, uniformly integrable, meaning that for any epsilon, you can find delta. Uh, those are fine. Uh, the key thing is that for any set uh, A on AB that is Borel measurable uh, and with measure less than delta, then you have the integral on A of gamma dot K S D S uh, taking the, the, the length is less than epsilon. Okay. Um, the, the key thing is here, rem re remember, okay, if you, you knew it already, it's rather clear, but here's that a is not just an interval, A is any, any measurable set, okay? So it can be unions of, uh, you know, countable numbers of interval and stuff like that. So, uh, so any such um, set I with measure less than delta, with low measure less than delta, 
uh, I mean, uh, then then the integral on i should be less than epsilon. Okay. So this is the key assumption. This is exactly uh, the so-called tightness. So this is uh, the tightness condition. I don't know. I mean, uh, there there are some other names, uniformly or uniform integrability and stuff like that. Um, and also here that we are working on Rn, so we have also have to be careful that even though if it's tight, the whole sequence is uh, gamma dot k is uniform integrable, but but if it's not bounded, right? If it's you know uh, traveling to infinity, then we would also be in trouble. So we also would need to assume a a, a very uh, simple but natural thing that at least you know gamma k of t naught is bounded for um, you know. For uh, for some given t naught, okay. So if this is the case, then you can find a subsequence gamma k j and gamma that is absolutely continuous. That you have gamma k j converging to gamma uniformly, gamma dot k j converging to gamma dot weakly in L one. Okay, I have to make this one clear, right? In the sense, in this sense, because uh, you know. Weakly in L1 is a very vague thing. Um, so, you know, we have to make it clear that that um, that in the sense that if you plug in any L infinity test function phi, then uh, then the integral of phi dot with uh, gamma dot kj converging to integral of phi dot with gamma dot ds. Okay. Um, any question for me at this point? Anything? you know, anything of concern or anything you want to discuss? Um, okay. Um, so, I mean, again, for many of you, this is maybe rather obvious, you know, uh, if you have taken uh, 721, 725, let me confirm, I mean, was this covered in any of the, the two courses? Can some of you tell me? Just. Uh, yes, I think it's uh, in uh, seven twenty one. Okay, cool. Okay, May, it it might depends on on the professors who cover it, right? But but I guess probably is somewhere there. Thanks. But again, I'm reproving it because because uh, you know it's 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 quite interesting to remember that uh, things might go wrong in L one. Um, so before doing the proof, let me say that this uh, so this this result is optimal uh, 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 so uh, precisely more precisely you know uh, if we either don't have a uniform integrability of you know, gamma k dot or uh, uh, boundedness of gamma k t naught, then we don't have such such subsequence. Okay, so that that's the claim. Uh, you know, I can give quickly two count examples. So example number one. The first count example is, you know, um, if you don't have boundedness of gamma kt naught, then it's easy. You can just, you know, take uh, just straight line converging to, uh, uh, to uh, infinity, you know, right? Because, because uh, example number one, you can take this one to be gamma one. Just this straight line, then then gamma dot is zero, right? No big deal. Everything is nice, and then you take uh, gamma two, and you know like gamma three, dot dot dot. You know up to gamma k. You know they are just just straight uh, straight uh, line segments traveling to infinity. Uh, uh, the whole sequence is is uh, gamma dot is zero everywhere, so it's uniform integrable, uniformly integrable. 
but because we don't have boundedness of, of, of gamma kt naught, you know, things travel to infinity. So that's first example, which is rather obvious. The second example is that when you don't have uniform integrability, even at just, just a point, you know, then, then the mass, you know, can concentrate at that point or sometimes the mass can concentrate a certain, you know, low dimensional object, you know, uh, of any house top dimension less than n. Uh, so uniform integrability is very important that you have to let A to be anything that is measurable with Lebesgue measure less than delta, right? Um, so the second example is, is you can take um, gamma kx as a function uh, okay. Um, I don't know what I'm saying here, but uh, you have to interpret it right. I mean, this is from minus one over k to one over k, and this is k, you know. So uh, whatever that is, you know, this is exactly the scenario that you have gamma k converge weakly in the sense of measures to the delta direct at, at zero, right? And this is this is the 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 the, the situation in which that if you take a set i that is of Lebesgue measure less than delta excluding zero, then everything is fine. But whenever you take the set i containing zero, then then it fails, right? Because because you know when k getting bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, the mass only concentrate near and at zero. Okay, uh, so so that that's where the 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 tightness or the um, uh, uniform integrability fails. Okay. Um, okay. So far, so good. So let's do the proof. Um, um, so the tools are not very, very complicated. We're going to use, you know, basically real analysis tool, right? I mean, the first thing, the first tool we're going to use is we're going to use Azela Ascoli. So I'm listing things here and uh, we're going to go into the proof. Azela Ascoli theorem. To implies uh, this is going to give uniform conversion. Conversion of gamma kj to gamma to some gamma. This is rather easy because first of all, you know, the assumption we assume was that gamma k t naught is bounded. Um, when it's bounded, you know. Um, then it's quite easy to see that the, that the whole curve is bounded. Uh, I mean, right. Um, and and in fact, by using exactly the epsilon delta argument, uh, you know, for epsilon there exists such a delta. So I'm I'm skipping rewriting the definitions. So with that delta, you choose any point t two and t one near each other of of the of the distance um, delta. So this is a b. You chose any t such t one t two of the distance less than equal to delta to each other, then you can just use exactly the the boundedness, right? I mean the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, or or by the fact that it satisfies the um, uh, characterization of absolutely continuous curves. You have gamma k t two minus gamma k t one is is um, less than equals to gamma integral from t1 to t2 gamma k dot ds which is less than epsilon okay and and this implies that uh, that the sequence uh, uh, so this implies that gamma k is uniformly continuous right only continuous and gamma k is bounded Remember that boundedness is important to use as well as Sometimes people forgot about boundedness. So you have uniform continuity and boundedness and you have a, a subsequence, a um, subsequent gamma kj, that gamma kj converging to gamma uniformly on AB. And also we have gamma is continuous on AB. And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, because of, of the nature of the conversion, uh, gamma inherits Sorry, inherits uh, the um, gamma inherits the the unif the absolute continuity of of, of the gamma uh, gamma k um, 
and this is also quite obvious, you know. So here I'm using, you know, I'm abusing notations a little bit, uh, you know. So let's say that uh, by uh, by abuse of notions many times we just write that gamma k converging to, to gamma uniformly on AB, okay? You know, it should be a subsequence, but you know, many times that I'm, you know, there, there are just too many indices, so I'm gonna try to abuse notions whenever I can, okay? Um, so how do we see that, that gamma is uniformly continuous well we are just using exactly the definition right you take um, any sequence of, of this joint open interval with the total length less than delta and clearly i mean because we are in r so so any any open set can be written in in a uh, at most countable uh, 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 as most countable unions of this joint in open intervals right so you write like that, um, and then you use exactly just just the normal summations here, and this is exactly by by the fundamental theorem of calculus and the inequality. You put the length inside; it's less than equal to that. And I'm rewriting it this this one as the integral of the union. And again, you know, let me recall that you can see this one as uh, you know if you look back into the definitions. This is exactly plays the role of the set I. Okay, so so here I is playing the role of the set union of I in I of A I B I, and you have the Lebesgue measure of I less than equals to delta. I mean less than delta, but doesn't matter. Okay. So so you you see that uh, the gamma K has exactly that uniform, uh, you know control and it's independent of k right i mean you see that this one is is this one is uh, this bow is clearly independent of k so because the bow is independent of k you let k goes to infinity and you have this summation right and that exactly gives us the fact that uh, um, this one implies that gamma is in AC, right? AC, ABRN. So you see that we are being flexible here. Sometimes proving a curve is absolutely continuous is easier to use gamma itself, right? Uh, sometimes it's easier to go to the level of gamma dot is in L1. Um, but you, you see that in this step, we haven't discussed about gamma dot. So it's easier to, to go in the gamma level. So that, that's the flexibility of the characterization that helps us to, you know, go between the two. Okay, and now this is a step that you see many times in a uh, advanced uh, measure theory set uh, course, or you know, in seven twenty one, uh, is that you know we need to show this conversion holds for for any u, you know. Okay, so let me say it out loud here that once actually. We show this toe true, uh, then 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 everything is done. I mean, it's written down there in the proof, but uh, but but let's just write like down here. So from here, so uh, this conversion house implies this implies that integral uh, in IB of the characteristic set of one uh, characteristic set of U gamma dot kj ds converging to integral on ib the characteristic set of u gamma dot ds right so that's the first thing and then once you have this this implies next is that this is going to hold true for any measurable borel measurable set e gamma dot kj ds converging to ib one e of gamma dot ds for for or a subset of ib borel measurable and from here that's going to imply exactly that integral on ib of any phi s dot gamma k 
kj sds gonna converge into integral on a b t s dot with gamma dot sds for all phi that is uh, in our infinity of a b mapping to r n right I mean, the, 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 the reasoning is that we can always approximate any L infinity functions by, by taking uh, summations of characteristic functions, right? Again, um, uh, you know. So are, are, we, are we switching order of limits uh, in the last step there, I guess? Uh, switching the order of limit? No, limit of yeah, so functions. Yeah, so from here, you mean from here to here? Right, right. Yeah, so so basically, okay, so there are, surely there are two limits. Basically, you have to be careful, I agree with you, right? Because, because here there's already text for that question, that's good. So here you have the limit as j goes to infinity. So here you already have the, uh, the limit of j goes to infinity, but you have to approximate phi by uh okay by summations uh, of um let me try to use i j k l in n of um c l characteristic function of e l okay so so his concern was that you know if you do that there are two limits right there's the double limit of j goes to infinity and also l goes to infinity right what's the what's the order of limit you're taking um, nevertheless, we don't have to worry here because of the fact that gamma dot k and gamma dot kj are uniform integrable, right? If you take a, 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 um, a tiny set uh, of measure less than delta, then the whole integral is less than epsilon. So uh, instead of thinking about, about this whole limit, uh, so, okay, that's a very good question. So uh, let me say it out loud. So in fact, in fact, by using epsilon delta, uh, we can, we can uh, ignore, uh, uh, you know, like uh, some epsilons. Okay, I'm, I'm writing epsilons uh, to just deal with Vs equals to summation, instead of taking L in N, you just need to take L from one to uh, a, a, a fixed number, big L of CL, characteristic set of EL. Does that make sense? Because the summations of all the other sets from L plus one to infinity is gonna be, the total measure is gonna be less than, um, less than delta. So I that's, that, yeah. Thanks for your question. So that's that's the way that that we avoid the, the problem of double limits. Okay. Yeah. So that that's a very important question. Is it clear? Or uh, I'm I'm a bit hand wavy here in terms of the epsilons because you know if I'm writing the epsilon, it's going to be uh, a bit. Yeah, blank. I think that, that that can make sense from there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Great. So keep. Keep discussing because again, I, I think that this is a very important uh, thing. Um, uh, it also gives me a chance, you know, to present everything really like as building blocks because you see that at the end of the day, uh, you know, dynamic system is really a branch of analysis. Uh, uh, you know, well, I, I take it back. Um, not all dynamic system. <laughs> I have to be careful. Some some parts of dynamical systems are in analysis. There's some very algebraic parts, but what we are doing is really just just you know in the in 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 the big umbrella of analysis. So I want to present it to you in such a way that it's uh, beautiful, but also very familiar to us. Okay. Um, okay. So that that's great. I'm I'm very glad that that question was asked. Because I actually also in the proof I was sort of also you know trying to you know ignore that 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 matter okay so um, so so that's that's a schematic strategy so at the end of the day what is really important is proving this and clearly 
clearly, I mean, with the, with the uniform integrability, then I have to deal really with the dapper limits. At infinity, I have to be careful. But here, we are fine. Yeah. And you see that, that I'm doing reductions here, and I'm using exactly one of the arguments that I just explained to you. So U is open. This is in R. Uh, so in R, it's, in, it, 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 it's, it's important to use this very simple characteristic that you can write U as a at most countable union of, of disjoint open intervals. Okay. At most countable. Okay. That's fine. Now, here's exactly what I just said. So it's enough to prove this claim three here. It's enough to prove this claim only for i is finite because we can use the epsilon delta argument to handle the countable case. What do I mean here? You know, instead of proving this, you know, you can say that, okay, if you want to prove for a, a countable union, then you are ready to sacrifice some epsilon. You just need to prove that this one is close to this one within an epsilon, right? And then, and then, and then you ignore a, 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 um, you know, here. So instead of considering this whole union, you only need to consider the union I from one to big L. I'm using big L because that was the big L we use. Uh, um, we only need to prove that result up to big L as the the whole measures from i from big l plus one to infinity of a i b i is going to be less than epsilon okay uh hold on delta so i'm going to throw away the 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 you know the the um, union from l plus one to infinity so i'm i'm losing you know, some epsilon here, I'm losing some epsilon here, but overall I'm only losing two epsilon, right? And then even unless epsilon goes to zero, you're fine. So that's why we only need to deal with, with this set, i from one to l, okay? Great. And, you know, uh, so um, please do write out the proof if you feel that there's, there's something that is not clear, but this is this is actually great that, that you know, like, uh, it's a you know it's a great thing to 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 think about. So when i is finite, then it's quite simple to prove, right? Because because this whole integral, you know, you can just rewrite as this summation. Everything is finite, uh, and this summation, you know, by 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 you know by the characterizations of of absolute continuous curves, you can just use it, you know, as the difference between the two endpoints, and you have uniform conversion there right and it's finite anyway so that converges to to this sum and this sum can be rewritten as this integral so we are done okay and now here i repeat exactly the the, the scenario that i just said but let, let let me repeat it anyway that you know once we have been able to prove it for for you you can then generalize it for i which is uh, measurable, you know, here, you know, let's be careful, Borel measurable set, whatever. Okay, so you have this, this uh, integral is conversion. Okay. Um, so as I, as I explained, you can exactly rewrite this one as, you know, instead of thinking as, as the inter integral on the set I, you can think of it as the characteristic function of, of I, right? And then by approximation, exactly what we just explained, then we have we have this conversion for any function phi in L infinity mapping to Rn, and we are done. Okay. Any concern or any question here? I have a question about the yeah. first part using Arzella as Coley. Uh -huh. um, so is the reason that we're just able to assume boundedness at a single t naught. That the tightness condition ensures everything is kind of close by anyway, mm -hmm. so that you have boundedness of the whole curve. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So okay. Let, let me make a remark about that. Yeah. Thanks about that. So I'm also skipping a step there. <laughs> so so another remark. 
is that you know like we have we have gamma k of t naught is bounded okay it's bounded say by c okay so um let me this is a b this is t naught okay and 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 uh, and the uh, the uniform integrability of the gamma k dot gonna gonna helps us to realize that the whole gamma is bounded gamma k is bounded right okay i mean how do we see that well i mean um there are many ways but uh, but one of the uh you know uh one of the very beautiful and clear ways is that you know you can just fix any epsilon okay so epsilon well, let's say that this equals to one, then there is a delta. So that we have like gamma k um, s minus gamma k t is less than uh, one for s minus k less than uh, t, right? Uh, on delta, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm just choosing things randomly. And clearly that, you know, this interval a b can be chopped up into into uh, roughly speaking b minus a over delta plus one interval sub intervals right of length less than equal to delta right and 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 you know we are just gonna use triangle inequalities. Uh, finitely many times and you see that it's bounded here and it can be linked to all this point, you know, so that we have the whole gamma k is bounded. Does that make sense? So yeah, it's, it's, it's very beautiful. You know, the whole thing, this is gonna implies that gamma k in L infinity by using this, by using this one and this one, surely it helps us to imply that gamma k in L infinity is less than equal to C plus, uh, um, uh, like b minus i over delta plus one or something uh, if i'm not mistaken i think so yeah so it's it it is really that the uniform integrability uh yeah i i, I do think that is optimal you know we cannot even ignore that i such as set i of the back measure less than delta has to be all possibility, right? We cannot ignore even a point there because it can be containing a, a, a delta mass there. Uh, and, 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 and then, you know, it helps us to control everything and also it helps us to ignore a, a set of small measure. So by, by the way, so this question and the earlier question were great because what it shows, were, what they, they show to us was that Uniform integrability allows us to ignore sets of small measures in, in the whole proof. I mean, we are using that all the times without saying it out loud. And, and if we cannot ignore set of, of small measures, then we have to be careful. And, and in the literature, there's something called, you know, like, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, there, there are certain PD problems that, that we would need to handle such a concentration compactness. You know, when there are concentrations, then we have to be careful. And, you know, and, and everything is in the same line. Okay. So great. I hope that, you know, those two questions really clarify the whole thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it in a, a little bit sketchy way here, you know, it, it also takes me a lot of time to think about things, you know, when sometimes I would write out the whole proof in a more detailed way and I, I would have to rewrite it because you know, I want to keep a balance, right? Not keeping you guys really bored with lots of details and no big pictures, but also that, you know, I feel like if I'm too hand wavy, then it wouldn't be of any help. So, you know, keeping a good balance, you know, I'm, I'm struggling. Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, now let me recall the whole strategy and bear with me, although that this is rather trivial, but um, if we ever have time to take a very advanced course in, um, in calculus of variations, you know, that is a very uh, hard topic actually. There are still a lot of major open questions for the vector value cases. Uh, 
and, and lots of books dedicated for that. And this is always called the direct method in calculus of variation. So this is the, the direct method in calculus of variation. Yeah, if I ha ever have times and if I ever have some energy, I'll try to uh, do this this topic course in 821. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful subject. Uh, very little is known for the vector value case. So I would say very, very little is known for vector value case. cases. Uh, you know, um, in this case, it's also vector value, but the good thing was that we are mapping from R to Rn, so it's easier. If we are mapping from Rn, uh, okay, so, so for us, for us, we are dealing with gamma mapping from R. Okay, it's not R, but uh, let, let me pretend that it's R. Um, okay, maybe there's a better way to write. We are mapping from AB, a subset of R to Rn. Then this is fine. Um, so for, uh, for elliptic PDE, uh, type PDE. If you have U is mapping from uh, a set uh, omega subset of R uh, N to R, this is also fine. I mean, we have great theories for that um, from the Georgi, uh, Nas Moses to other things. Uh, but 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 for the for the general case, general cases that you have uh, vector value functions. So uh, that maps from omega in Rm to Rn, and this is really hard. There are lots of major open question there. Okay. Um, anyhow, we are, doing, we are doing the first scenario here I mentioned, so this is fine. Why, well, you know, fine in the sense that we have a good existence and regularity theory, but dynamical system is hard, okay? Anyhow, so I, I, I recall the strategy here. We're gonna use compactness to prove existence of minimizer. That's the first step. And then we're gonna prove regularity of minimizers. Uh, so the new admissible set, so I recall it here. So instead of just gamma piecewise C1, we now gonna allow gamma to be, you know, like having much less regularity. Just to fix endpoint, you can think of gamma having, uh, you know, just zigzag shapes mapping from Y to Z. That's fine. Uh, it it is allowed to have a, a countable number of jumps, for example, of in in the gradient, for example. And, and our problem, our problem of concentration or of, of uh, interest is always this minimizing problem. Action, minimizing the action functional. Okay. So under some reasonable assumption, I'm gonna actually uh, tell it right now to you. Uh, let's see, oh, I have only four minutes. Okay, I think I can tell you that. This one is, is obvious. Not obvious, but but uh, this one should be fine for us. Um, why? Uh, you know, remember that I just tell you that if you take any theta, so you pick theta greater than zero, so there is a C theta greater than zero, so that we have our Lagrangian, our XV is going to be greater than theta times the length of V minus C theta, right? That's uh, you can just deduce this from exactly the super linear graph, right? Uh, and from here, you can see that you can imply right away that the action functional uh, uh, on the curve gamma, uh, the action of gamma, L gamma gamma dot ds is just gonna be greater than equals to integral on AB of theta gamma dot ds minus C theta B minus I, you know, this one is greater equals to zero. So the whole thing is gonna be greater than equals to minus C theta times B minus I. So uh, 
it's rather clear that 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 the whole thing is bounded from below by some universal constant minus c, right? Um, so we just proved the first point. Because of that, uh, you know, we can now talk about infimum value, and you can find a sub uh, a sequence in the admissible set so that i gamma k converging to i gamma infimum value and then um okay uh, we have to prove okay we can then use the compactness result what do i mean by that then we have to use this we need to show need to show that gamma dot k is uniform integrable okay so that's what you have to show um, uh, uh, it I'm not writing it here let me think um, so this is a vague question but but Maybe it's gonna be even in my next note. I'm gonna take need to think about that. So, question: Why don't you? Why don't you? You you all discuss about this on either Canvas or, or Piazza. You know, right? I mean, how do you show that gamma k dot is uniformly integrable from here, right? You know, given that L is 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 uh, L is um, super linear, um, I'm gonna you know maybe write down for the next lecture or, or the, the the one after that. But but why don't you you know discuss about that to see why it's interesting um, and maybe later on. This is actually I you know I have never checked the literature carefully, but the next question is that if L only has linear growth, then what? I bet that there's something already about this in the literature. Um, you know, I always needed superlinearity, so I never checked that if it's only linear. Then was there already some papers in the literature show that uh, you might not have a minimizer? I bet that there's already something, but you know, this is an open-ended question. It might or might not be interesting at all. Okay, but you know, it's it's, it's good. But 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 my claim is that if you have if you have uh, if you have um, uniform sorry if you have uh, superlinearity you're gonna have uniform integrability, and then we're gonna use exactly the compactness result that oops, uh, the compactness result that we have that we can find a subsequent gamma k so that we have this conversion. However, still even from here we are not yet done, right? We have a now we have a you know we have a good candidate to be a minimizer, which is gamma. Okay. Why is it a good candidate? Because I have I gamma k converging to the infimum value, and I also have gamma k converging to gamma. Okay, gamma k converging to gamma uniformly, that's fine. However, you know, I only have this converging weekly, only weekly, right? So I, I cannot hope right away that I of gamma k gonna converging to I of gamma, right? So then I would need to show this property. I would need to really show this, this point that the limb inf of I of gamma k j Going to be greater than I of gamma, and this is something called the weakly lower semi-continuity property in calculus aversion. So this is another another key point in the theory of calculus aversion. 
we have overcome almost all hurdles. And this is the last one. Yeah, the last one is to show that we have weekly lower semi-continuity. And once we have that, then we can deduce that indeed, I mean, this eigamma is gonna be exactly the infimum value, right? Right? And, 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 and that shows that we have a minimizer. So although all of these are rather standards for some of you or very new for all uh, for, for, for some others who have not done uh, deep uh, study in calculus of variations, no matter what I want, the point is that I want all of us to have a, um, you know, like a big pictures of understanding about the whole strategy and it's rather um, core and natural. I mean, again, natural in mathematics is, is the point that we get used to it. And if you were the one who would write out such a schematic procedure, then I bet that you would come up with something close to this. Uh, that That's my point. I mean, or maybe that this one is too classical. Maybe that at some point we can come up with something different. I mean, there are some other different approaches, indirect ones, uh, but more or less they share the same sort of philosophy and, uh, you know, uh, so, okay. So, so that's that I, I, you know, those are not, not um, required, but optionally, if you find that there's some interesting point to discuss and why don't you discuss those two questions again, just optional because, because they are quite hand wavy. Um, and we're going to discuss about the first question anyway, in the next or the next, next lecture. Uh, the second question, I haven't searched the literature. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, so that's great. Any other quick question for me? So again, I really like the two questions that you guys asked me today. That's really show that you did invest a lot of energy for for going deeper, and I I, I love that. Um, um, yeah, thanks for that. And then uh, please do. Uh, put some time for, for every lecture before it starts because uh, that's the only way that we can, you know, try to make it better than in-person classes, I guess. I mean, my way, not, not uh, I have taught a lot. I, I haven't been able to find a better way. Uh, or if you have suggestions and do let me know. All right, other than that, then thanks for questions and, and uh, you know, discussions and let's keep it like that uh, every single time. And then I'll see you again on Wednesday. Uh, I'll, I'll remember to post the next lecture notes uh, tonight. Okay, thank you. Okay, see you, bye.